Okay, so this is a little how-to on setting up a new model on the 9XR and setting up your endpoints, uh, midpoint, and a mode switch for flight controllers such as the NAS or APM or NASA. So I use the side button to go and navigate to find a new model. Put it in model 11. I can give it a name here. I'm not going to bore you with that, but you select. Use the menu button to go into the uh, to select and then move along with this one. Once you get each one, you can use the up down arrows to change the uh, character that's displayed. Hopefully you can see this all right. Right, let's get to the serious stuff. Exit a few times to get to the cursor up at the top here. And we can go across. So you see it's already put in a mix for us, a six channel mix with some switches. First one we'll go through is setting the end points. We go to this one called limits, I think. Yeah, limits. If you're setting it up on your um, NAS board first, really you want to go to the reverse and make sure that all the channels go in the correct direction. So as in when you push the stick to the right, the uh, aileron channel goes to the right on the screen, goes to the left on the screen. I can't remember if forward or da up or down is left or right, but with a little plan you should find it. Otherwise you'll have arming issues if you um, don't do that. So you set your reverses by just dropping down the menu and using the menu button to toggle it. Hit the exit button to jump back up the top here and then go to the other menu, limits. Now this is the one. First of all, I'd suggest that you set up all your center points. So you want to center all your sticks as close to the center points as possible so throttle in the mid position all the way around and then if you look on your screen and they should all be at around 1500 or the center of the box if they're not you then go into this one here which sets your midpoints and you just tweak the numbers they do negative numbers as well which take it the other way just keep pushing it until you get a nice 1500 or as close to as possible. If you don't have it set at 1500 you'll find that the model will drift to one side, forward, back or whatever and with the throttle, especially with the NASA, you might find it tries to climb or descend all the time when it's in the middle position. Right, the next one to set is your end points. I think that's what I'm looking at. Yeah, you see there's a little arrow on the screen there that indicates the direction that you're setting. So, for instance, uh, the, aileron, the arrow points in the last direction you've selected. So, it's showing me on the aileron that I point, pushed over to the left. So, if I wanted to set the one on the left to be higher or lower, I could then I'll adjust this box here. You do that again by selecting the menu button and just tweaking it until you get the value you're after. You'll find that there's only so much resolution that it can deal with, so it may be out by a few, a few numbers here and there. Do the same for all of your other channels. Now, a mode switch. There's lots of ways of doing it, but here's how I do it. go to the custom switches page now what these are are software switches that use certain rules before they'll engage so we'll click on this one and we'll make it equal to and and then we're going to have three of these so we'll make three ands and right there we go this is typically what I use for a NASA or a APM for setting my return to launch 
So it, whenever you select return to launch on your um, controller, it automatically overrides any other settings you've got. So you don't have to select through lots of different modes to get what you're after. On this one here, we'll use, so we'll set it on the, um, just the camera a little bit. We'll set it on three position switch and then we'll use this one here as the override. So whenever you pull this one down, it doesn't matter what position this switch is in, it will always select return to launch or whatever function you've triggered on this call. So what we'll do is we'll set our switch here to ID zero, which is up. We'll set the next one to ID one, which is middle. And the next one to ID two, which is down. We'll go across to this side here and we'll select this. We, instead of going to the right, you go to the left. <coughs> And now you see there's a funny exclamation mark that appears before the uh, switch. The exclamation mark is code. If you're writing, say, C programming or most other languages, an upside down I or an exclamation mark means not. So this means that the throttle switch is not engaged, as in it is up. So we'll turn this until it says not ale, not aileron, which is this switch up here. So while this is in the up position and ID zero selected, software switch one will be selected. So ID zero and not aileron, this is true and will be on. So whenever you select aileron off, ID zero won't engage software one. Okay, so we'll do that for all of these. I'll do the same for this one as well. Done. Okay, now to actually use them. So we're gonna go exit to get back up on the top tab here. Then we're going to move along to where we find the mixer page. Now, I'm going to have mine active. My, my channel for doing all my mixes is going to be channel 5. So to start with, I'm going to delete this. So you see what I did there? I went to the mix I wanted to get rid of. I held menu and then I scroll to the bottom of the menu or just press up to get to the bottom delete mix menu you have to hold it until it beeps assuming your radio is set to beep right we're adding a new mix hold menu on the channel you want to add the mix to source we'll select that as full this is how much to how much range to give it so full would be from 900 a hundred a thousand milliseconds to thousand microseconds to two thousand microseconds half would be 1000 to 1500 or 1500 to 2000 weight we'll leave as a hundred for now we'll set that in a moment switch this is the one we're interested in. We'll turn that and we'll keep going until we get software one. That would be our ID zero position. Warning off, multiplex, that needs to be replaced. So that means that when the switch is active, you replace what's put out on the channel with the weight. So whenever this switch is active, it will put out 100. 100% which is 2000 microseconds. We don't need any delays, we don't want to delete the mix. Right, press exit and we'll see there's a new one in there. Full software one. While we're on it, we'll hold again. Oh, no, we don't want to do that. We're going to go back onto channel five like we did before. I really hope we can see this because I'll be really annoyed if I can't, if I have to do it again. Right, so we hold menu on here again. 
Source is again full. Weight will set as 100 still. Switch will be software 2. And multiplex will be replace again. Done. Exit. So there's no 2 on there. Down again. That cursor there means that you're still on channel 5. Hold it again. Set this to full again. Switch to software 3. Multiplex replace. Exit. Right. That's all well and good. We've now got ID zero. We're going to output 100%, 2000 microseconds onto channel five all the time at the minute, except for when we select the aileron switch up the top here. Okay, what's going to happen when we do that? Well, nothing at the minute. So what we need to do is add another, one more little switch mix to um, make it do something when aileron selected. So we'll hold menu on there again. Source full once more, you know the drill by now. Switch though, this time is going to be aileron. If you remember when we set our mix up, we set it to not aileron. So this is what happens when the switch is engaged. You could add a warning if you want, so it beeps to tell you it's in return to launch, but hey, that's up to you, I'll let you fiddle with that. Multiplex replace as always, and there we go. This is everything we need to set up a four position flight mode switch. The next thing we do is we put it into the switch we want to select. So at the minute we're in software one. Software one is active because this one's up and so is, this one's in ID zero and this one is off. So the AND rule is true. We then look at the tab on our configuration program on the computer in something like base flight configurator or clean flight config or the APM mission planner or the NASA software suite. And all we'll do is turn this until the tab indicates that we're in the right range to select whatever mode we want on that channel. Once we've got it and we're in the middle of the zone, We'll go on to the next one and we'll move the switch to the next position and we'll adjust this one. So if this one probably wants to be, oh, I don't know, let's put it at, I don't know, there. And then we'll put the next one here. Select the new position. This one's probably going to be, just bear in mind it goes to minus, so that's like 1500. This one here is going to be 1700 ish. Yeah, don't shout at me. And down once more. Now this time, this is our return to launch. This is our override. We pull this down. It doesn't matter what position this is in. This is going to be active because none of these mix and rules are true because this switch is down, but this one is active because the switch is on. And then we'll adjust this one until it selects our return to launch value. There we go. And that's it, job done. Now whenever you pull this down, it doesn't matter what flight mode you're in, you will be forced into return to launch or whatever you've selected to be active when this switch is active. I hope that's been a help. See you later.